So signals can also be periodic, but not necessarily sinusoidal, like something like this. So you can see I'm tapping the microphone and then going with my voice. And we could measure the period of that. We'll take a few samples here. Hit stop on the oscilloscope, and then we could get a sense for you know, what the periodicity of the signal is. So if we look at these right here, you know, which conveniently almost land right on two divisions, that's 500 milliseconds. You know, so that corresponds to a tempo of like once per second right there if we look at the time between these two. And obviously I wasn't keeping really good time because there's a little bit more time between these two right here. It looks like more like 1.2 seconds or you know, 1,200 milliseconds. So this is an example of a periodic signal that's not necessarily sinusoidal. And those are common. You know, kind of a common one of those you'd see in an instrumentation class would be an EKG signal, you know, the electrical activity of your heart. Another really popular signal these days is noise. Noise is popular now because we have statistical methods and really powerful computers to actually look into the noise and figure out what it is. Like I could make some noise like this. Do that again, running out of breath. And if we zoom in on this noise, like there, there's some periodicity to it but there's a lot of different frequencies that are encompassed in it. So usually noise, or what they call broadband noise, is a lot of different frequencies that are summed together to make a complicated signal. And you'll learn in signals and systems that using things like Fourier decomposition, you could figure out what the components of different frequencies of noise are. And there's some really cool techniques like uh, optical coherence tomography, image processing, where you could take a signal that's essentially noise and use some of these statistical techniques on it and actually be able to image things. It's very cool stuff, which was you know, really impossible to do. And people just knew about it in theory 20 years ago, but now with our high-speed computers and algorithms, we could make use of that in clinical settings.